Hey, what's up? Apple pack. Um, I'm back. I have a microphone. I've got my webcam all set up. Uh, it's kind of like the, the old days, like three years ago, I think was when I last did videos like this. Um, but yeah, this one isn't going to be quite like an Apple look stuff up. Uh, so this one specifically, I did not want to look anything up. Um, I have a pretty good general knowledge of physics. I've watched far too many theoretical physics science type things to where I wanted to kind of create my own genuine response to it. Granted, I did take a little bit of time. I did some math on this, um, but uh, this question uh, it came from my, my beautiful wife and uh, I, I love her curiosity, her like imagination. I, I, I'm envious of it, honestly. Uh, I wish I could just like think like, oh, what if this happened? And I'd be like, and it just makes my brain just go like, oh, this is so fun. Like I could, it's like my own little playground where I'm playing in her imagination. Um, so she asked me because she had this um, dream slash like story brewing in her head of uh, what would happen um, if gravity went away, like gave out. Um, and I, I was like, well, that's my knee jerk reaction. And I have to like, kind of like bring it back. I, I recognize that I can be kind of this, like, um, I can have this like, oh, and look, look who's here. Hi, Pepper. Pepper. <laughs> I got to get the money maker in the shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. I have a bad tendency to kind of be like, oh, that's impossible or, oh, like, you know, um, and not really have fun with it. Like, let my imagination just kind of run wild. Um, and I rec I've, I've been able to recognize that more than I probably did three years ago when I was just very matter of fact about everything. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of address this idea from like a few different angles. So um, if gravity went out, now let's say it went out like across the whole universe. Well, it would be quite literally chaotic. Um, it would like create an insane amount of what we call entropy, which is, um, um, entropy is basically how much like unusable energy or unusable stuff there is in the universe. So, um, usable energy is like, you know, the electricity coming into your, your home. Um, let's say it's, you're using it to, um, it's, it's the summer here in Vegas. It's extremely hot. It's like, seven o'clock right now it's over 100 degrees still outside um so we're running our air conditioning we're using usable energy in the form of electricity which we get in numerous different ways and um run this air conditioner it does its job it makes my home cooler but it will um use that energy up and eventually it uses it up and it converts it into what ends up being a cooler home, but it's also warmer outside because of it. That's, it does like a heat transfer kind of thing. And ultimately all that energy is used. If I turned my AC off, like in a few hours, my home would probably be like 80, 90, hundred degrees. And all that energy is like, it was used for like a momentary moment of, of bliss for me. For I, I, hey, I can be comfortable, um, but that energy is 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 gone. It's not necessarily gone, but it's been transferred or, or uh, converted into what is essentially unusable energy in the form of like just this chaotic heat energy that we can't re we can't recapture that energy. Um, at least we haven't been able to figure out a way to do that. So the reason I say gr if gravity went out, that that would happen almost like in an almost catastrophic way is gravity is very good at like holding certain things together. Um, and gravity is actually, um, from what I can understand of the universe is probably the number one, um, 
generator of any kind of energy in the universe. Um, so a good example of this, if um, I'm sure that we've anyone who's gone through like a basic science class about the solar system, um, they love to talk about like what would happen to the sun, you know, billions of years from now. And um, essentially what scientists have basically figured out based on observing other stars in our in our galaxy um, and just understanding what is happening from a physics standpoint inside of a star. Um, it is fusing um, atoms together and it's doing it because it's so massive and it's creating so much gravity that it's forcing these atoms together fusing them into heavier elements, which then sink to um, the inside of the uh, star. And in that fusing of those atoms together and, and creating fusion, it emits a great deal of radiation, which is the light that comes to us from the sun. And um, that's where basically all the energy on Earth is, is coming from, is from um, our sun. You take gravity away and suddenly it's no longer doing that. Um, and um, the reason that the sun would die eventually is that um, it actually will become less and less massive the more it fuses together because every time it fuses together, it's um, in emitting energy, it's losing mass. And eventually it's going to lose so much mass and it's going to have not enough, um, uh, it's going to be made up of so much like um, heavy metals and things like that that it can no longer hold in that that reactor around it and the gases that make up the sun will just expand and literally consume like i forget what the what it is before it, it actually ends up dying but it'll end up consuming several planets and then um, i think gravity is able to take back hold again and it turns into some other kind of star i'm not an expert on it i didn't look anything up so this is what you get. But if gravity went away, the sun, like it's, it's almost like if you were to take a, um, I'm trying to think of a really good example, like, um, it's almost like popping a balloon. Gravity is the balloon that's holding all of that stuff together and allowing the sun to do what it does. And it's extremely dense. It, it wants to expand. It does not like being that close together, but gravity is keeping it that way. So if you take gravity away, the sun would expand. I don't know how fast it would expand. I imagine it would be pretty violent and pretty fast. Um, and it would probably engulf the solar system. However, if gravity stopped hap or existing, um, then Earth would spin away from the sun. Um, I decided, hey, it'd be fun to bust out my old physics stuff. I'm sure my um, old high school physics teacher from, oh God, this is going to age me a bit, from about 25 years ago, I think. Um, would be very proud of me that I can still do this math. Um, but what I ended up doing was, um, I looked at, um, I basically calculated the speed of earth. So earth is, is, um, about, um, 584 million miles away, uh, from the sun. And it takes us, as we all know, about 365 days to, do one full revolution around uh, the sun. Um, so if you'd like to see my math, I don't know if it's going to show up on, oh, it does show up on camera pretty good. So yeah, um, 93 million miles from the center of earth to the sun. Um, I did the circumference, which is two pi r. Uh, so when I take two times 3.14 times 93 million, you get 584 million miles. That's how far we travel in one year. Uh, that's how far the earth travels around the sun. Pretty insane, right? And we do that in literally 8,760 hours. That's um, 365 days times 24 hours. You divide the two and you get 66,671 miles per hour. Now, the way that um, 
centripetal or centrifugal force or however you want to say it works is that um, if the earth were rotating around it the sun like so and then gravity just went away earth would just travel in a straight line tangent to that circle just out into the void out into space um, and we would be doing that at about 66 67 thousand miles an hour um, now and that's that's in relation to the sun granted in relation to the galaxy we're going to be going in a straight line at who knows how fast depending on what we are using as a reference point um, but as a reference point of the sun this is how fast we're going to be traveling away from the sun um, and that actually might be faster than how fast the sun would expand from gravity giving out um, so so that's the solar system and then that's like what would happen what would happen on earth um so this one was fun um what i love is that everything spins like that's it, rocket science is literally you you have to learn about all the things about spinning stuff around other things uh, essentially what is rocket science you're putting something in orbit orbit is a rocket that, or a spaceship or whatever you want to call it going in some sort of a circular pattern or a you know elliptical pattern is what we'd like to say because nothing's a perfect circle but an elliptical pattern around celestial bodies whether that's a sun or that's our earth or we're putting something in orbit around the moon or lately sending things to mars or sending things trying to send things out of our solar system which is incredibly hard to do like you're overcoming the gravity of our sun and trying to go interstellar which is pretty cool um but anyway so circles right circles earth is spinning on its axis um now if gravity gave out um and you were to jump say you would jump and you would keep on going you would not stop um Granted, there's going to be air resistance, so you probably would stop eventually, but there's no reason that you would come back down to Earth. Um, gravity isn't there. Gravity won't be like, hey, I want to pull you back down. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a scary thought. Like you could jump and then you would just be stuck in the sky, um, completely unable to get back down to the ground. Uh, you would have to use some sort of propulsion of some kind whether that's like maybe you have a fire extinguisher with you and you can blow it in the other direction to try and push you back down to earth um but earth is spinning um which means that earth is like as it like imagine the best way i can think of this is imagine earth is on one of those pottery wheels right so earth is on a pottery wheel and your hands are the gravity so the hands are holding the earth together and holding all the things on it as it's spinning on the pottery wheel. Um, all of a sudden, if you take your hands away, you know, things are going to start flying off of the, off of earth. It's going to start like ejecting material. Um, now it's not going to do it super fast, um, even with no gravity. So, I did a little bit of, of math on this one. This one was a little bit more complicated, which I liked. It was more fun. So um, first I had to look up what is the circumference of the earth, um, which was here. Let's see if I can read this on, on my video. So earth's circumference is 40,000 kilometers approximately. Um, this one I did in meters per second because um, so gravity on earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. I wanted to try and get something that was like it could you know but the number we'll get to the rest of the math and then i'll explain why that may have not have been a great idea but anyway so um that's the circumference of earth so if you were to do a, a walk around the equator um it's 40 40 million meters um now the earth rotates obviously we all know the earth rotates every 24 hours um, approximately and you multiply that by 60 minutes and then multiply that by 60 seconds you get 86,400 seconds so if we take 40 million 
um, approximately and divided by 86,000, you get 463.83 meters per second. Um, that's how fast we are spinning around the axis of, um, of Earth. Um, now, you take the, the radius of Earth. So this is how far it would take till you got halfway to China, if you're, for those of you in the United States. Um, basically, this is how far it would take to get to the core of Earth. Um, reason we want to know this is this is going to tell us our um, our angular velocity. This is going to tell us like what our because um, um, you know we're spinning around the center of the Earth in the same way that Earth is spinning around the Sun. Um, so we take that radius, which happens to be um, six million, a little over six million meters to the center of the Earth. Um, we take that velocity I got, you square it, divide it by that radius, and that gives you your acceleration. So this is how fast the Earth is accelerating things away from the cent from from the edge of the Earth. It's not very fast. Um, it's 0 0.034 meters per second squared. The thing with this though is, so Earth's gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, is pulling us down to the ground and the ground is stopping us we've developed our bodies through evolution through whatever to allow us to just be able to stand and walk around and do our normal thing under this 9.8 meters per second um that's you know why we have muscles and bones and everything else is to to overcome that 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 force that is on us at all times now this force is gone and now there's this granted very small force pulling us away from the center of the earth um now this is the, the, the so you you aren't really accelerating this fast um because the earth isn't because it's spinning it's not like constantly pushing you away with this so this was a little bit of a eh, i shouldn't have used this um example nearly as much but Basically, if you think about it, everything, let's say like, you know, a few feet below the ground of Earth is constantly pushing out on the edge of the crust of the Earth. So Earth is is constantly wanting to break apart. It's, it's going to look just like those videos you see of like, um, uh, you know, like mudslides where like you see things just falling down, but they're falling up now. Um, and, um, it's, it, it would be devastating. I mean, after just two, uh, after one minute of experiencing this, anything that is, is constantly being spun by is, is going to be traveling at 4.5 miles per hour. Um, which again, doesn't sound fast, but when it's away from earth, like it's kind of terrifying. Um, again, once you're detached from earth, you're no longer going to be experiencing those accelerations because you're floating essentially at that point. But the other issue that you're going to run into is um, the reason we have an atmosphere, the reason we have oxygen, the reason we have um, we're able to breathe is also because of gravity. So gravity holds the atmosphere in place on top of the planet. And um, without gravity, it's going to also just slowly expand away and dissipate, um, which would be horrible. Um, I have no idea how long it would take. Um, it sounds like torture to all living things on the planet if this were to ever happen. Um, I don't know what taking gravity away would do on a molecular or atomic level. All I know is that on that level, um, gravity is considered to be a very weak force. Um, things that hold atoms together, so like nuclear forces, magnetic forces, things like that are considerably stronger on like a micro level, like our bodies would be considered and things like that. So it's not like everything is going to just start slowly separating apart or anything like that when gra if gravity were to go away. Um, so you, you, you would conceivably see people and animals and other things like literally floating away um, along with rocks and it, it would be a pretty cataclysmic looking thing now 
I don't think that was my, my wife's intention of this question. I don't think she's, you know, like, I think that's me overanalyzing it. So I wanted to take a step back and be like, well, what if, um, gravity just stopped working for say people or maybe animals, animals. I, I love animals usually a lot more than I like most people. So let's just say people, let's just say, um, some crazy, you know, futurist or some crazy alien technology, some nanotechnology is like, um, swarming us and then it infests us and it, it creates some sort of an artificial anti-gravity or it creates some, some level of like, um, of force against us to where we feel weightless essentially. Um, I, I mean, I think anyone who's caught outside, um, would be screwed. Um, cause it are, again, our bodies are designed to be able to withstand the, the one G of gravity that's constantly pushing down on us. So our bodies are always constantly, they have to push back up in the equal and opposite direction in order for us to just be able to stand and do things and walk. You're literally, every time you're walking and you take a step, your leg is overcoming that 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and if that 9.8 meters per second squared is gone and you're still trying to walk the same way you do now, every step you take, you're going to be pushing yourself away from earth and then suddenly you're floating and there's nothing you can do about it. Being weightless is honestly terrifying. When, um, I think it's one of my favorite, like, um, space tropes, um, because I th it's true being weightless makes you feel help. I, I can only imagine it would make you feel helpless. It's almost like, you know, floating in a massive ocean, um, except you can't swim. You, you can, you can flail your hands and your arms and your legs and whatever, all you want. You're not going to go nowhere. You, you, there's nothing you can do. You would have to quite literally find an object on your body, like your clothes or your cell phone or whatever, your keys, your wallet. I don't know. We don't have like an insane amount of mass on us to do this. And we would have to throw it in the opposite direction of where we want to go. So if we're accidentally floating away from earth and we're like, Oh shit, I need to get back down to earth. You could throw your cell phone real hard towards the sky and hope that, you know, that creates enough, um, inertia to push you back down to earth and, um, allow you to, to grab onto something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think, um, we might be, we might end up in a weird situation where we're living in an upside down world for a while while we figure this thing out, you know, like people literally living on their roofs, um, or like, you know, like the, their house would almost be like a space station where you're like floating to the roof and then you push off from the roof. Um, again, this is assuming that gravity is still working normally for everything else. It's only affecting human beings. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, I guess if you think about it, you could still go and use your car. Um, now I know that, um, they've, and I don't know any of the specifics of this, but I think our human body would start to have some issues. Um, this is something I've, I think I've heard of with, um, um, astronauts that are spending insane amounts of time in the international space station and things like that, where, um, they look at the effects of their health living in that kind of an environment for a long time. And, um, I know one thing, our muscles will deteriorate if we, you know, we have no way to recreate that, that gravity on us anymore. So now all of a sudden we're trying to figure out ways to, um, to try and just keep our muscles like, you know, working and they're not working like they normally are. They're literally, you know, you have nothing to push against. You would have to like come up with something there. Um, granted, I guess, technically if gravity isn't, is only affecting our bodies and doesn't affect anything else, I guess you could technically float into a gym possibly and 
the weights will still feel something um, and that'll still push you down into the bench or push you down into the ground. Like picking up a weight would, would do such a thing. Um, so I guess there's that. Um, but I mean, otherwise, yeah, it's, uh, I think it'll have some really bad effects on our health, obviously. Um, it'll make our production insanely difficult. Like, you know, farmers are going to have trouble doing what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, knowing, knowing us though, as humans, I think that would actually be like kind of a neat thought process, like question to go through is like, I could see human beings like coming up with some intuitive ways of using it in some sort of way, you know, like, um, some ingenious way to, you know, um, uh, use it to our own benefit. And cause you could still drive around in a car. I mean, the car should still be planted on the ground, things like that. So, um, yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a fun question. And I, uh, as soon as my, uh, I remember when my wife told me about her little story about it, like, she's like, Oh, I wonder, um, I loved it. I really loved it. And, and, uh, it really like got my brain juices going, which I love. Um, I'm a very, you know, curious person. Um, and, uh, um, I, I love thinking about things like this. So I really appreciate my wife for, uh, for bringing this up and asking me, um, another part of her question was, um, why do scientists not think it would happen? I think they don't want to even consider it because, well, again, like I was saying earlier with like my first example is if gravity went away, um, that would basically accelerate the end of the universe very quickly. The universe would be, would probably become pretty useless place to be in pretty quickly. Um, I don't know, like I, I almost on a theoretical physics, um, standpoint, I feel like it would like break a lot of things. Um, so like things like space time, um, which is the idea of like, um, you know, that we're in a 3d space, but there's also this fourth dimension, which is time and they are intertwined with each other. So depending on how fast you're moving through space can affect how you experience time. Uh, it's an Einstein figured that crap out. I, I, genius. I barely understand it. He created it, but anyway, um, but from what I understand, it's dependent on gravity. Like gravity is almost creating the space time. Like, um, without gravity, you wouldn't have space time. So it would create this very weird situation where I don't know if it would like destroy the fabric of the universe in some way. Like suddenly things may not have the same distance or time may not pass the same way anymore. It'd be really interesting to, to, to hear what that might be like, but I feel like gravity, we keep finding gravity is intertwined with all kinds of other science that I think scientists don't even want to think about it because it would just break everything. Like everything would just get broken by it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that's why scientists haven't really addressed it. Um, on a cosmic scale, like outside of our solar system, let's say our galaxy, um, if gravity went out, I think I would be, I, I mean, we might have the greatest fireworks display. Um, well, no, we wouldn't cause we wouldn't see the fireworks for, you know, many, many years, but I can only imagine what would happen to a black hole when gravity went out. Cause the black hole is this insanely hyper dense mass that creates so much gravity that light can't escape from it. And all of a sudden, if that gravity is no longer there, all that light is going to get released, all the radiation, all the energy, everything that is like compacted inside of this thing, inside of this black hole is just going to just go everywhere. Um, granted, it can't go faster than the speed of light, but it's going to just blow out so fast and everywhere. And with many, many, like some of these, these black holes are massive, like, um, the size, like they have as much mass inside of them as is in our own galaxy and imagining an entire galaxy worth of stuff being ejected at what I can only assume would be close to the speed of light 
in all directions would be a spectacular thing to see. And um, again, would probably destroy the universe because as it's doing that, it's going to be blowing other things up. And since there's no gravity to hold that stuff together, everything is just going to get scattered and just scattered and scattered. It's going to be, um, yeah, it would be quite a, a sight to see. Um, probably pretty terrifying if you actually got to see something like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Fun thing to think about. So um, yeah, I, I just I just wanted to end this by saying like I really enjoy this. Again, I, I love you, uh, my wife. I love you so much. Thank you for this. I can't wait to get to the next question that you have on here. Um, I'm really happy to have my setup again. Uh, making videos like this feels a little bit better than making them on my couch. Um, I can already tell the audio is going to be substantially better. Um, and just allowing me to be a complete and utter nerd. Um, I think I've realized like where my passion for this nerd stuff comes from. Um, why I so badly love to understand how things work. Like I love to understand how my, like in my work, I love to understand how my plane works. I love to understand how the world works. I love to understand how people work, like what's going on in their head. I love to understand myself. I don't understand myself sometimes. Like I wonder like, what is going on in my head that makes me think certain things or makes me feel certain things um, or makes my body react the way it does to certain things. I love to understand that kind of stuff. And I guess the best way I could describe why I'm this way, and this is just like a little side thought to this whole question, um, is people love to talk about the idea that our universe, our world, it's just a simulation, you know, um, the matrix was what popularized that idea, but, um, imagining that our whole universe is just inside of someone's computer and we're just some giant simulation that's just occurring within their com inside of a computer or something like that. And if that's the case, then when I think about it like that, then I'm just curious, like, I want to know the source code. I want to know the code that makes up the world that I live in. And I think that's where most scientists come into. Like most scientists, I think they do this because they want to know why X does to Y and why Y does to Z. And they're, tr they're literally trying to figure out the algorithm, the, the code, the programming behind our simulation so that we can understand what it is that's happening around us. And I don't know, uh, it just, it just piques my interest. You know, um, it does make, I, I, I always told myself, like, I didn't think this curiosity would necessarily, you know, um, make me, um, a better employee or a better person, but it actually does. Like it absolutely does this, this passion for this kind of stuff absolutely will and can make you a better person. And like when you, if you ever meet someone who genuinely wants to understand you or understand a situation, they're so much more pleasant to be around and to work with than someone who either doesn't care or somebody who thinks they already understand, you know, like the, those two sides of it. So you get the egotistical type of person, you know, the know-it-all who just it's like, oh, I'm not going to listen to any of you because you're stupid. Um, and then you get the person who's like, well, I'm never going to understand any of this anyway, and it doesn't matter. So I don't care. Let me tell you, those are the two people that I hate the most to work with on a team. It's the people that want to understand. It's the people who want to put in the work and want to, um, and truly get into the weeds of something so that they can better understand what it is that they're doing so that they can be better at it in the future. Um, and sometimes I just requires a little bit of curiosity and I'm all for that curiosity. So, um, yeah, uh, just a little insight into me. Um, oh, it looks like, it looks like pepper is, uh, sleeping in her bed. Um, I might try and get her on the camera for, um, a little bye bye Hey, come on. Okay. Yes. Yes, you you got to make daddy all the money. You got to make daddy all the money on the YouTubes, okay? All right. Okay, you say bye. Bye, YouTube. We love you. Mm. All right, y'all. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad to be back doing this. Um, let me uh, see. Um, so I'm not sure what my next one is going to be um, on. But um, a few things that my wife had brought up is um, asking about like um, what life is like at like the deepest parts of the ocean. That one's going to be an Apple look stuff up because I have no clue. I, I think I've seen a few discovery shows on that topic, but I, I, I would have to look stuff up on that. Um, another good one is she was curious, like what are president's lives like after, uh, they served their term and as president. So, you know, like what was it like for Obama after his eight years? What was it like for, you know, Clinton after his eight years, like so on and so forth. Kind of curious to see, um, you know, and I'll, I, that's another one. I'll have to look some stuff up. Um, but like, you know, how much do they make? Um, are they rich or are they famous? Well, obviously they're famous. They're an ex president, but yeah, you know, uh, things like that. And then, um, I think the one I I'm going to want to do, cause I'm really into this like science kick. I've been watching a lot of like science videos lately. Uh, I've been lo loving getting back into that again. Um, she was asking, um, why the earth doesn't, um, like collapse in on itself. Like what holds the earth up? Um, and is the earth growing? Is it shrinking? Is, is like, is there anything happening from that standpoint? And especially given like human influence on the planet. Um, so that, that was a, that was a fun question. That I, I think I might want to tackle next. So, um, and she said, she's going to send me more. So who knows? She might send me another question where I'm like, I want to do that one. Um, but yeah, this has been fun. Um, I like this format of doing this. Um, maybe I'll try and do a vlog this way as well. Um, and there's some other topics I'm really deeply interested in talking about some like, um, more, um, mental healthy type stuff. I think I mentioned it in one of my other vlogs. Um, so I, I look forward to it and I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, I haven't created any kind of spiel, but you know, if you liked it, um, subscribe, it helps numbers, I guess. I don't know. Um, but you know, share it with your friends, things like that. Um, the other thing I, I never knew this, but apparently people putting comments on videos, good or bad helps. Um, also doing the thumbs up and thumbs down on the video helps. I apparently, you know, on YouTube, any publicity is good publicity and it helps, um, you to be like, Hey, you might be interested in this thing. So it might make me reach out to more people. Um, other than that, I think, uh, tomorrow I'm going to not just think I made a promise to my wife. I'm going to stream some Microsoft flight simulator tomorrow. Uh, it'll be at 4 PM Pacific time. Um, and I just need to get my stream all set up. I think I'm, only going to stream to YouTube tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'm going to, I've never done a multi-stream before. I set my system up to do it, but I haven't tested it. So I'm a little concerned and I'm going to screw something up. So it might be better if I just stream to YouTube, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, Microsoft flight simulator. My plan is I'm going to do some flight plans, um, flying around, uh, the Nashville area, which is where I am going to be moving to here in about nine months. So, um, should be a lot of fun. I'm going to mess around with my camera settings and stuff too. And, uh, yeah. Um, with all that, thank you so much. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.